What is going on? I want to welcome you from Amcor for today, Tuesday, September 6, 2022. I'm your host, Sean Murphy. Along, oh my God, it's another video where it's just me. Holy, <laughs> we'll get through it though. It's okay. I promise. I know how to do this, okay? But anyway, today we are here to have a conversation because this last weekend I went live and we were talking basketball, just talking about Pistons, NBA, everything that we like to do here. And one of the things that came up obviously was Sadiq Bay. And it was really interesting because when we were doing that video or when we were talking about that particular topic, one of the things that was coming up quite a bit was there were a lot of people in that call that were deep believers in Sadiq Bey as a player now, as well as what he can be going forward. And it's rather interesting because the Sadiq Bey conversation is a really polarizing one because a lot of different people have a lot of different perceptions on where he can be as a player, what his ceiling is, what he is now, where he will end up. And I think it's an interesting conversation. Now, one thing that I saw, and, and, and there's the extreme opinion that I want to shut down at the very beginning, and, and it's that I, I saw people think that he'll be better than Cade. And I just don't think that's possible. For him to have to ultimately end up being a better player than Cade, just from the sense that I think what Cade Cunningham brings to a basketball court, what he brings to a team, what he brings to an organization is something that you can't just find each and every day. There's a reason why Cade Cunningham as a player archetype and what he does on the court, that's going to go number one almost each and every time that he's in the draft. There's nothing more valuable right now and guards or forwards that can handle the ball, create their own shot, create shots for others, and make the people around them better. Now, Sadiq Bey, what we can say is when that guy has the ball in his hands and when he actually is allowed to operate in open, in open space, when he has a wide open shot at three, or even if he's contested, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of times where Sadiq Bey, for a lack of better terms, is money. And one thing with Sadiq that... I love about his game and something I've noticed and something I keep bringing up whenever I, whenever I talk about Sadiq Bey is that he has something very similar to a certain NBA superstar that I think not a lot of people in the league have. And I think it's that very reminiscent to Clay Thompson. When Sadiq Bey is on, he is on. And specifically we see that magic game last year where Sadiq had 50 plus and a lot of people point to that game as like, see, yep, look, this is what he could do. And it was awesome. Like, that game was insane. But, like, the thing is, is, like, that wasn't even, like, the only performance like that that Sadiq's had. I mean, that's uh, obviously that's the only time he's ever had, like, 50-plus points. But there's definitely been other times where he comes out of the locker room firing and swinging and, and going on all cylinders. And that was just, like, a game in particular that stuck out in the memory bank as one that was special. But he had quite a few ones this year. We had 30, we had 20. You know, so Sadiq is is a great scorer. He has the ability to get the ball in the back in the basket. But the problem with Sadiq's game and and what's currently holding him back, what's currently going to decide his overall ceiling and everything that he's going to be able to do is specifically his ability to consistently knock down shots each and every night. One problem with Sadiq Bey's game that I consistently see whenever you look at his score sheet, there are a lot of nights where Sadiq is like five, seven from three. There's a lot of nights where he's four of eight from three. Heck, there's nights where he's six of 13 from three. But the problem is, is that there's also plenty of nights where you go, oh, why is Sadiq Bey four of 17 from the field? Why is Sadiq Bey shooting 13 threes in a game? When he's only made one or two. Like, I, I get that, like, Sadiq has the ability to knock down shots. And he's the type of guy that, like, if you keep giving him looks, eventually he's going to knock it down. But, like, at the same time, you have to understand for, like, the sake of your team, it's not the best thing to always go out there and just have something where people can just run up the scoreboard. Like, this is something where you, like, you want people to be able to consistently hit shots. You want guys to be able to go out there and, and consistently do their part. And one thing with Sadiq with that is that if you're going out there shooting one of 12, one from 13 from beyond the arc, that's essentially 12 possessions right there that are almost gone virtually. I mean, like, because a, a majority of the time, the Pistons aren't going to be in position to get that offensive rebound. That's just the way that it is, right? So for, the, for him to not give up the ball 
that easily and not have a lot of those shots like that on the shot chart, I think that's going to be a big thing for him because a lot of guys come in and they're great shooters and they think that, you know, they just have to get that quantity. They need to get as many threes out there as possible. But in reality, sometimes it's about the quality of the shot too. Now, one thing that we saw with Sadiq this last year, as far as like trying to expand his game, grow on his craft, work on his abilities, things that he's done. He's really been focusing a lot more on trying to create his own offense, specifically off the dribble. And so far, when we saw that at the beginning of the season, I think there were a lot of inconsistencies. But one thing I think we saw as the season went on for Sadiq Bey was once he actually had a uh, Jeremy Grant, once he was kind of out of the lineup, and Sadiq was able to play more of that natural, you know, that three or that four position as well. I think that actually allowed Sadiq to thrive and to have someone that doesn't you know, try to initiate offense in similar ways on the court, I think was something that was really uh, beneficial to his overall game. And I think part, quite frankly, I think with how well Sadiq Bay has played is part of why the Pistons felt comfortable with trading Jeremy Grant in the first place to go get Jalen Duran this summer. So when you look at that type of play, when you look at that type of asset that that brings to your team, that's something that's special. And the other thing about Sadiq, and, and, and the main thing that makes me not worried about all of this and, and and all of the aspects of his game that are good, there are aspects of his game that are not so great. For me, I'm always going to believe in the guys that have that elite, elite work ethic. And one thing with Sadiq Bey that we've seen in his entire time, like Troy Weaver's had to be like, hey, dude, slow the down. Like, go get a hobby. He had to tell him to go get a hobby this off summer. When you're telling a young player in the NBA to go find something fun to do, that means they like to be in the gym, and they like to be in the gym a lot. And we saw Sadiq this summer, according to James Edwards III, the reporting that he did at Summer League. We saw that Sadiq was in Colorado for the beginning of the summer focusing on high-altitude training and also focusing on hiking because he wanted to get his conditioning to the best space possible for when he came back to the court. What other NBA player do you know that's in Colorado in the offseason doing high-altitude training? nobody it's insane so one of those things where it's like you know when you look at Sadiq and when you're looking at where he can grow where he can go for me it, it like the the faith that I have in him just makes me much more of a believer and and, and I do firmly believe that Sadiq Bey can and will be an all-star someday now the one interesting thing with Sadiq that always kind of comes up and is kind of like the elephant in the room is that he kind of feels like the one piece that like if the Pistons, like let's say down the road, the Pistons are looking at a piece, get better, upgrade, go get a superstar, right? Sadiq Bay is probably going to have to be in that trade package. And I posed the question to my chat last Sunday, you know, would you personally trade Sadiq Bay in order to go get a guy like Jalen Brown? And the, the chat was pretty split. It was at, at one point, it was around 50-50. At one point, it was around like 55-45, no. It was around 60-40, no. But like the ultimate point is that like it shows like that hesitancy and that polarization within the fan base of would you make that move? Because I'm not entirely sure. And that's the thing. Even me, like I love Jalen Brown. And if I'm thinking of like the wish list of players to add to the Pistons, that's a pretty damn high one. But the thing is, is again, it's hard to say no to a guy like Sadiq, man. It's hard to pass on his upside and his potential and everything that he brings to the game. He's such a stout defender, too. That's another thing about him that's so great. He has such a great physique, a great frame. He's just the type of player that every single team in the league would kill to have on their roster. Now, obviously, you know, there's there's a situation where I could see, you know, down the line towards his career where, like, you know, maybe he doesn't end up being that superstar that we all hope that he would be, but like instead he could be like a like a PJ Tucker or Jay Crowder type, which still those guys are insanely valuable throughout the league. And so even if Sadiq, you know, whether it's whether he ends up as a rotation piece, whether he ends up as a solid starter, whether he ends up as an all-star, I think we've all seen that at the very least, he's a good starter in this league. He would go to the vast majority of teams throughout the league and he would probably have a starting spot within their rotation, right? So I think for Sadiq, I think this year, you know, a lot of guys, this is like a prove it year. I think Sadiq, I think a lot of us are expecting this to be a breakout year 
for him. And that's the thing is that he set himself up to have those high expectations. But quite frankly, the reason why is because the guy works really hard and plays really good basketball. So I'm really excited for what Sadiq has coming up for him this season. I really do think that he is a special talent. I think he's one of the you know more special players that Troy Weaver has been able to bring in and just like one of the more special players the Pistons have had in the past 20 years. I mean, this guy is just a diamond in the rough as far as where we found him, where we got him, the value that he's bringing to our roster, all the different things that he's doing for this Pistons franchise. And again, just don't bet against guys that work that hard. That is always one of my lessons and philosophies in the game of basketball. So with that, what do you think of Sadiq Bey? What do you think of his upside and ceiling? Do you think Sadiq Bey is going to be an all-star in his career? Let me know in the comment section down below. But that is going to do it for today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you like this pretty damn nice rebrand we have. And I'll catch you guys next time from Half Court. Be sure you subscribe.